<laughs> they're all in the bright Barbie pink. And yeah, I, so my question is, did Barbie ever have a dog? I don't think so. Right. I don't I think, think she one of the versions of Barbie had a dog. Did she? Good question though. Definitely hmm. something for Mr. Google to answer for us. Yeah, uh, well, we should write about that and have them incorporate a dog or a cat or something like that. <laughs> we are the Dog Gurus. We are a business consulting service and staff training service company that helps pet care businesses launch, grow, and profit. You can find us at doggurus.com. So I'm going to just go ahead and let you guys know about next week's topic. Next week, we're going to be discussing staffing challenges. And this topic is, you know, red hot topic. It's on everybody's minds throughout all across industries. We're not the only ones experiencing it, but it's, it's been trying. It's been, we've been experiencing it for a couple of years now, right? So I'm not exactly sure. Carrie and I haven't discussed exactly what we're going to be talking about with staffing challenges, but we're going to be talking about some good stuff. If there's something that you want us to specifically talk about next week, go ahead and write it in the chat. Okay, and then we can we can prepare for that. All right, but today, today's topic is about staff rewards and employee recognition. But before we go into that topic, I really think that we need to discuss the importance of a healthy culture because you can try to give all the positive praise or buy as many lunches as possible or give gifts, but if you don't have a positive culture, it's just really not going to work as good as it could. So Carrie, what do you have to say about developing a healthy culture? So your culture really comes from the foundation of your mission, vision, values, and purpose. And I'm just going to read off my little list here so I get it correct. But mission is really what you do now and who it's for, how you do it, and then what it achieves. So that's what you first have to keep in mind. And then your vision is where you want to go and what you want your mission and ultimately kind of your, your success story to be. Your values are what you stand for, why you do what you do and why you do it for, for the specific audience that you do it for. And it's the beliefs that you use, which carry your goals forward. And then your purpose, your purpose statement is really who it is, you know, what, what is summarized kind of in one sentence, what you do for or your kind of overall goal and passion for, for what you do. And if you have all of those aligned, that creates the culture that you want because you should be living that mission, vision, and values every day. And I think of an example, just, you know, if you're, you're, you know, part of your, your values is honesty and, you know, transparent communication that should be going on with your staff too. So you should be very honest and open with them and constantly giving them feedback on their performance. And I think that definitely will help what is going on with the employees. But if you project one thing to your clients and you're not doing the same, you know, it's not reciprocal with your employees, then they can kind of get that negative taste in their mouth and, and they, well, you know, you just kind of hear that there's backstabbing. There's just like this underlying toxicity of gossip. And so it's really, yeah, drama, staff drama. There you go. Yeah. And, and I'll break it down even a little bit more. So I think all that stuff is right on. Yes, we need to have those aligned, but what does a good culture feel like? So a good culture feels like the, the or the, I should say the employees feel like they have respect they feel cared about from the owner and the leadership team. They feel valued and appreciated. And that's where we're going to get into the reward system. And I'm going to add in there, they feel known. Because the thing, like, I've, I've been this person, this owner, where I didn't understand that I needed to go, when I entered the building, I needed to go in and walk around and say hello and look everybody in the eye. I just walked in my office start doing my work. And then people think that I'm in a bad mood or something like that. But once I realized, oh, they need me to acknowledge them <laughs> and say hello and have some small chit chat. And I know it feels like it's not productive time because uh, we're already so busy as owners, but it is so important and means a lot to the, to the employees. So, you know, if you can spend first 15 minutes going around the whole facility and going in and saying, hello, how's your day? How was that test you just took? Or, you know, 
whatever it is that's going on in your life, you're going to learn a lot more from the um, from your employee. And who knows, maybe you'll learn some information where they have a great idea to bounce off you to help improve your systems. So I would really highly encourage people to start getting in that practice if you haven't done so. So if you feel like you could improve your culture or you need to improve your culture, what are some of the ways that we can work on rebuilding that? I would do an employee culture survey. I would send out, you know, you can use one of the freebie websites, Survey Planet, Monkey, Survey Monkey. Um, there's people, yeah, yeah, freebies that are out there. And, and you don't have to make it really in depth. It could be five questions, but make sure that you are actually engaging the employees to understand what it is that they want. And, and that they are, they're, they're giving their feedback, sometimes doing it anonymously so that they are not um, having to put their name on it because some people are afraid to speak up. But if it's an anonymous survey, they're more apt to give you honest feedback. Um, but I think that's one of the ways that you can start to see, you know, where are they feeling that there's a gap in appreciation, like you said, or feeling like they're supported. And, and if they're feeling that gap, you've got to be able to identify that in order to make adjustments and, yeah. um, and yeah, raise the culture. Yeah, I think that's a really good one way to do it. I think also just the, your next staff meeting, just as the owner or general manager, just acknowledging that there is opportunity for improvement, I think can go a long way, whether it starts with you or other things, but just acknowledging it saying, hey, we realize this is going on. We really want to work, work on it. Here's what we're going to do also kind of humanizes you as a boss. Cause sometimes I felt like they didn't really <laughs> humanize me. <laughs> you know, it was like so many of their problems, they didn't care what was going on in my life, which is not their concern, but you know, as an owner, we, sometimes we feel like that. Right. So, so I think it just builds a better relationship. Another thing that I think that's really small step to moving towards rebuilding your culture is it, having a daily huddle before each shift. And this da daily huddle can always start with what is something positive? Like, what is your win for the day? Whether it's work related or personal, you know, we started doing that and that really helped us rebuild and create a culture of positivity. And when somebody says, Hey, I got an A on a test or, Hey, you know, I was able to buy a new car or something, you know, the whole team started to have a puppy. <laughs> yeah, or got a puppy. <laughs> Which Lori just got a new puppy. Maybe you'll show, I don't know where your puppy is, but maybe you'll show the puppy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but you know, I think that's a really good small attainable step that you could take to start to re change the mindset of everybody and get them to start, you know, recognizing and thinking positively when they get to work. Yeah. There is one other thing that I'll mention on this subject, and then we'll move on to the recognition. But one of the things that we did when we had a, a lot of a lot of new staff come in, and it was really frustrated for some of the, the older staff or the staff that seasoned staff that's been there and they had to train. I had us do this, this team building challenge, and it was called the exact instruction challenge, or better known as the peanut butter and sandwich challenge. Have you heard of it, Carrie? Not. I'm interested. Okay. It is really funny. So basically you have a, a team of two and one person writes the instructions on how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And the other person has to follow them, but they have to follow them exact. So you can Google this on YouTube. There's like examples of videos of it. It's really cute. But like, if they say, put the peanut butter on the bread, but they didn't tell you to open the jar, get the knife, put the knife in there. Anyway, so so people just put the peanut butter on the bread. It's like, well, you can't eat that, right? But it really just had a little bit more compassion as for realizing, okay, maybe I'm not giving the instructions that great. And maybe, and also it's not that easy to understand instructions. So if you haven't done it, it's a great, it's a great thing to do. And it's it's a lot of fun in a staff meeting and you'll get lots of laughs and people will have a good time. Okay, so Virginia is asking, how do you do daily huddles when you have three or four different shifts with very little overlapping? My recommendation would be maybe you have a midday huddle with all of your leadership team, and then your leadership team does smaller huddles with their shift workers. You may do two a day if you've got with the, those three to four shifts, if there's you know, maybe overlap that you can have two shifts together and do two different huddles. 
Um, but I think that it's really key to have a, at least once a week, but daily, I think is better. Yeah, we would do, we had, we kind of had like three different shifts that started, but really the beginning of the day and then the midday, the midday one where the second shift, the main shift came on was really important because that's when the morning team could talk to the afternoon team, but we had a midday team too. We basically just had the mid team kind of catch up with the lead on, on staff instead of huddling them all together, but um, starting your day correctly. And then having that importance of the teams talking together in that um, the second main shift was really important because they also tell the staff like, Hey, watch out for, you know, these two were having an issue these together or, you know, something like that. So, all right. So now we can move on and let's talk about some of the ways that we can help our staff feel valued and recognized. And I know that Carrie, you, Carrie was my coach when I was a profit network coach. So she pretty much taught me a lot <laughs> and she's the best coach ever. Anyways, oh. um, <laughs> But Carrie showed me a couple of really great tools to use at my facility that that helped a lot. And one of those things was um, a favorite things list. So do you want to kind of talk about that? Sure. Do you have a, a picture of it you can share? It? I do. I'll go ahead and get this up on screen. The idea behind this is that you are just getting a record of everything that is personalized to your employee. So what is their, you know, what's their birthday? And then what's their favorite birthday treat? You know, is it just a candy bar? Maybe they like ice cream cake. You know, what is their favorite food? What's their favorite drink? It's all these different lists. Do they, you know, collect anything? I've had people put dust on their floor because they're not a collector of knickknacks, but, you know, they may not be the best at cleaning their house. So um, just kind of silly little things. But, um, you know, what kind of music they listen to, what kind of movies they like. It's just, it could be really in depth or you can just make it, you know, maybe five or six categories. But the idea behind it is that you get an understanding of something personal personalized that this particular team member enjoys. And, um, and you can reward that, whether it's on their actual birthday or maybe their work anniversary, um, or maybe there's just, you notice that this person has had either a struggle that they've been showing up every day, even though they may have something going on in their life outside of work. And you can acknowledge that by bringing them their favorite coffee to drink, or maybe they've just done an exceptional job and you've been short staffed. And, you know, I think we've all gone through that and you can just recognize those people who have been going the extra mile by giving them something that's on their personalized list and that you're not bringing bringing um, a Snickers bar when they really are a Reese's peanut butter cup person. So. You know what? I thought I could just upload it, but it's not letting me. So oh. what I can do is I wonder if I could put it in the chat, but let me see if I can do it this way. Hold on one sec. I think I had a, but... yeah, it's like this, I see the window, but it's not sharing anything. So, all right. Well, if you want the favorite things, what we could do is put your email in the chat and I'll go ahead and I'll email it to you. Actually, how's that? Hang on. I've got it right here. You got it? Okay. Yeah. Let me share my screen. Okay. I'm okay. Go Can you see it? I think it's coming up. Okay, perfect. And let me go ahead and make it bigger. All right. Let me see if I can blow it up a little bit more. Does that make it a little bit easier to see? Yeah, there you go. Okay. So, so this is, yeah, we're looking at, you know, what's their name, the date they filled this out. Cause sometimes if we had employees that had been with us a few years, we wanted them to update it. Something may have changed. You know, what is their um, birthday and month? We're not necessarily asking for how old they are. Some people are sensitive about that. If they have a significant other, their work anniversary date, do they have children? Do they have pets in their home? And then when we start getting into, you know, what do you like as an incentive for doing a good job? So in some cases, you have people who are recognized by gifts and other people are recognized by praise. So, you know, maybe they just want to be recognized at that daily huddle, or maybe there's people who are really shy and being drawn out in public like that makes them very uncomfortable. So asking them how they like to, to receive some sort of incentive. And then what's their favorite candy, drink, type of food, color, pizza, restaurant, and so forth. And then we would, this is actually what the dog gurus use for their employees, but we always want to list one thing that nobody knows about you because it's just kind of that, you know, funny little tidbit that, that we can kind of learn about each other. So mine used to say I was a South American born opera singer, but <laughs> you, never know, you never know what's going to come up with it. Right. That's right. That's cool. <laughs> yes. I'll still send it to you. Yeah. 
So, and then the other thing, actually, why I've got my screen shared. So once we had this information, we could then take it one step further. And when we did our daily huddles, we had what we called an employee shout out and anyone on the staff could write a shout out to somebody. So as an example, I'm going to say, I shout out Shante on July 26th for helping me complete all my report cards on a day where, you know, I was really slammed and I had some difficult dog behavior in my group. And then I sign it, Carrie, and then the bark buck value would be you get one bark buck. So what that looks like is you get a little dollar that's, you know, the United Paws of Dog Tired. And, you know, we made them look as kind of as real as we could, um, given our silly logos. And, um, and they came in, in different um, denominations so that they could get the, the bark buck. And then the employee would then collect those and they could turn them in at our little store. So they could get, you know, a candy bar, energy drinks. We had a whole slew of different gift cards and different value levels. If they decided they wanted to save them up, they could get, you know, a year subscription to some streaming service or a half day pay off. And, you know, then, you know, 150, they earned a full day of pay to get an extra day off, which that seems to be something that was really rewarding for my staff at the time, because they were all that flexibility of having more time off was really important to them. So, so the more shout outs that they wrote for their fellow coworkers, the more bark books they could earn. And the other side of that is that what we found when we were doing all of that was that we had people who were shouting out, like, say I was shouting out Shante for the things that were important to me to get help on. So we started noticing that, you know, oh, Shante realized that every time she helped me with report cards, she was getting a shout out from me. And so they kind of learned areas that were a struggle and that they could help each other out because that's what they were basically acknowledging in the other person. So it was just kind of a, a cool process to watch as they started doing it more and more frequently. Yeah, we did something similar. We called it a kudos and we had like a kudos box and we did incorporate the bark bucks because I learned that from Carrie, but before we did the bark bucks, we actually just had a kudo bin. So if somebody, if, if an employee wanted to shout out something great about another employee, it was there. And then at our monthly meetings, we would go through and we would start to read all the box and hand them the pile to each employee. And it was funny because uh, right before, maybe like a week before the employee meeting would come out, we noticed that people were writing, <laughs> they were writing these kudos like crazy because they wanted to be recognized in the group because everybody would <laughs> start clapping and whooping and stuff like that. And it was just really fun. Yeah. So, <laughs> so little things like that you can do. People really love. There's also other things that you could do to reward your staff that doesn't necessarily cost money. Maybe like one of the things that we did is if you were doing really great, and, you know, you won a contest or something like that, or you have, you know, somebody, a certain amount of shout outs that, you know, were obviously great, then you were, you were awarded the ability to control the music for the day and you could play your special playlist. I mean, obviously the music had to be, you know, appropriate, but, but that was something that they really loved to do and they would get real creative and make all their playlists. And it was a huge, big deal for them. And it didn't really cost the business anything, but it was something that the employees valued. So you can get really creative with ideas like that. That's great. You know, one thing when I worked at Nordstrom's <clears throat> like 40 years ago, they used to do a staff meeting and they would actually read letters that came from clients who had had a great shopping experience. So we encouraged our clients to do something similar, whether it was that they had had great service or they just really enjoyed how that particular staff member wrote the dog's report cards or that that particular staff member had a, a different relationship or, or a stronger bond with that particular dog that um, clients would either give them notes and we could read those out loud or clients would bring that individual something off of their favorites list. So, you know, a lot of times clients will say, you know, what can we do? And, you know, they bring pizza or cookies or, and not that there's anything wrong with food, but sometimes to have them just acknowledge one staff member for something that they kind of felt they went above and beyond for their pet is a great way to, again, use that favorites list and be able to say, well, we really know that they like, you know, frappuccinos from Starbucks. And so um, that's what the, the 
the client would bring in for that staff member. And when others see that happening, it's like you said, with the kudos box, suddenly, you know, they start feeling empowered to do things for different clients and then get some acknowledgement themselves. Yeah. And Edmund says, we set up catch me doing slips and boxes, both in the back and at the front for clients and staff and staff and staff. So great job, Edmund. Yeah. That's awesome. I like that. I like how people are so creative with the names of their programs. So yeah. <laughs> doing that's a great one. So <laughs> yeah, and and with no with that little favorite things, I know it's see it can be a lot of time to go out and get those specific things. So one of the things that we did, especially around the holidays, is we used a company called Giftogram and they had like over a hundred, you know, a couple hundred retailers in their system. So basically you could have like a $25 gift certificate and they can apply it to whatever business they wanted to. And that was a time saver for me as a business owner. That was really awesome. And I think there's a lot of other companies. The one that we used was Giftogram. So you guys can consider using that, especially around the holidays too. All right. So does anybody have any other ideas or that they want to share on different ways that they reward their staff? Go ahead, write it in there and we'll, we'll talk about it. But of course, with this reward system that you put in place, I guess I should say you need to have a system being put in place because if you don't have a system, it's going to fall through the wayside and it's, it's going to slip by and it's just not going to get done. So I would highly encourage you to try to build that in. And along with that system, it's really important to just set aside a budget for it so you can be prepared to, you know, go out and, and spend a little bit of money to reward people with that, with, with nice things. How much do you think, what did you put in for your reward budget? How much did you put? I used to spend $5,000 a year at Starbucks. So, <laughs> but, but you know, I'm a Starbucks addict. So yeah. I would often at least once a week, bring the entire staff coffee on my way to work every morning. So, or once a week. And, and so, yeah, I would say, you know, it really depends because you can have you can break it down and have like one that's for your holiday party. If you have like a full staff holiday party and then another for your, your, you know, just kind of those rewards or that acknowledgement system that you have in place. But I would say, depending on the size of your staff, if you have, you know, up to 15 employees, you would, you know, want it to be somewhere around, you know, 2,500 to $5,000 a year. You can also use some of those, you know, to bonus people, depending on, you know, what that, what that looks like for them. So yeah, we did. We spent about $500 a quarter. That's what I set aside to start out with. And, you know, sometimes we would use it on, you know, food or a party, but uh, sometimes we do a bigger a party. So one of the things that we did after we were able to regroup after COVID is I put together, I used to have a clubhouse at the community that I lived at in California and I rented out the clubhouse and we had a potluck party and I hired a uh, artist to come do a paint night for yeah for the staff and it was so much fun and everybody just had a great time the clubhouse also had a pool they jumped in the pool even though it was really cold but they still did it anyways um but that was a really great way to bring everybody together and just have some fun and enjoy each other's company and just really build some some friendships with that so there's all sorts of things you guys can do. Your staff will really appreciate it once you start into implementing these kind of things on a regular basis. All right. Well, I does is there anything else? Did we miss anything? Not that I can. Let me see. Let me throw my notes. Oh, What's that? I was no, say, yeah. <laughs> one thing that I'll say is one of the things that maybe could be a high value for recognition is writing an actual letter of recognition for your staff member, because maybe they could use it for a college entrance or something like that, or it's just always good to have. So even if you just write up like a really nice email acknowledging it, that can be really high, highly valuable valuable for that employee in, in the future. So that's one thing that I thought was a really good idea that I saw out there. Edmund just noted that over the years, they've budgeted between one and 1.5% of their overall payroll budget for rewards. So that's a great way to, to look at it. So. Awesome. Awesome. Very good. All right. Well, we'll wrap it up today. And I guess I'll invite you guys to join our Grow Your Pet Care Facebook group. 
If you haven't done so, it's a great place to get ideas with other business owners. So we just have two rules, be nice and no selling. And I guess that about wraps it up. There was something else. Oh, the other thing that I was going to mention is if you like these ideas and you like these, these forms that we have, it's also part of our growth, our growth intensive formula program. So if you don't know what that is, go to our website, check it out. I'm also going to put the links in here. Do you want to give a little quick overview about that program, Carrie? Sure. It's um, the middle of our signature programs. You know, our, our philosophy is to see businesses launch, grow, and profit. So we have launch formula for businesses that are just starting out. Growth intensive is for people who've been in business, say, you know, three plus years. And, and they're looking to kind of solidify their, their systems and making sure that they've got all of their operating procedures documented and that they have, you know, everything in place for their employee handbook. So you really kind of those things that in the first few years, you're so just working in the business and overwhelmed that you may not have had time to complete. So working on that, getting a lot of forms in place. Um, if there's things that you need to change, working on, you know, your culture, um, all of that is included uh, within the, uh, the 10 steps of sustainability that are part of the growth intensive program. Awesome. Yep. That about wraps it up. Yep. All right, everybody have a great day and we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.